Hey everyone, so today we're here doing the install of the TMC tuning box on the Abarth 595. This is a Competizione model, 180 horsepower. So to start off with, we need to lift this tube up out of these clips. We've got a 10 mil, 10 millimeter bolt into the airbox here, which needs to come out. We need to undo this clip on the airbox to release that hose and then very carefully pull the airbox straight up don't push back on it because at the back here there's a pivot which the airbox sits onto and if you push back on it and snap it it's attached to the inlet manifold and you'll take a chunk out of the inlet manifold which will then leak air and it's going to cost you a lot of money so be very careful to pull straight up so you feel it coming up off these pop clips. And that should let the airbox lift out for us. This is the clip that I'm talking about where the airbox attaches to at the back. You can see it comes directly off the inlet manifold and if you snap that, you're going to cost yourself a lot of money, so be very careful with that. Underneath here, we've got the camshaft sensor. This is where one of your connections goes to. Our second one here is manifold pressure sensor. And the final one on this car, because this is an MTA automatic gearbox and a cabriolet, the boost sensor is here. On the normal models without MTA, that sensor is located down underneath the airbox or sort of underneath the battery at the back here. So underneath the battery, you need to take the battery out, the battery tray out, or, or lift the battery tray up and forward. And your boost sensor would be underneath there on a normal car without the automatic gearbox. This one has it here. So this is boost, camshaft, manifold pressure, and then your plus connection will be on here. So again, we've got three connections to make here because this is our three channel kit. We do a two, a two channel one as well, which connects only to the boost pressure here and the manifold pressure. But this one is the three channel kit, which connects also to the camshaft and the battery. So this is the camshaft connection here. It gently pries out the little yellow safety clip on the plug, push down on the black piece and pull the plug off. Then you put the male connector from the tuning box on and make sure the clip locks in. On this connector you'll see that one side has an angle on the plastic and one side doesn't. We need the clip from the original plug to go over the angled part and lock in. Do the same thing for manifold pressure sensor. We release the clip at the back, push down, pull the plug off, put the male one on exactly the same way, and the female again, the angled part under the clip, make sure it locks in, push the yellow clip in. And the final one is our boost pressure, which is here, we release the locking mechanism, push down the plug, take that off, and the other one goes on and locks in, and the female from the box, again the angled part under the clip, and lock. After this we just need to tidy up all the wires, you've got to make sure that none of these are going to be sitting, touching against anything hot that they can melt on. Everything under here gets pretty hot when this engine's running at any speed. So all the cables need to be carefully tied away uh, somewhere that they're not going to sit on the metal and melt. And the final connection we have to do, we'll do at the end, which will be when we've put the airbox back on, and that's going directly to the plus cable on the battery.
So I've now zip, zip tied all the cables safely away from anywhere that they're going to get melted. Just cut the zip ties. It means everything's safe. And then we'll refit the air box, just basically doing reverse of what we did, taking it off. But again, be careful pushing it back down onto the, the rubber plungers. I get that this one at the back is so important not to push it forwards or backwards, just straight down or straight up so that it doesn't break. So. So everything else is safely tied up. We've put the air box back in, clipped the main hose back on, clipped this uh, breather pipe back in again, checked that everything's in place. All the wires and cables are safely tied away and zip tied so they can't melt on anything. And the last connection is to the battery with this little fork terminal. So we just loosen off this bolt, put the little fork terminal underneath it. And then tighten that back down again. Put the plastic cover back on that. And that's basically the ins installation complete. Just want to point out as well, this is a T-Jet engine. This is the European Abarth. Uh, anyone watching this, if you've got a USA car, it's a different engine. It's called a multi-air. And the installation is completely different on it. So this installation video is just for the T-Jet 1.4. And this happens to be, this car happens to be the um, MTA automatic gearbox, which has the boost sensor in a different location to the cars without that, with a manual gearbox. The boost sensor takes a little bit more time, probably an extra 10 minutes, because the boost sensor is located under the battery. Also, this little plug is called a bypass plug. This is something you would put in place if you want to return the car to stock and be able to drive it without the extra power simply just plugs in and plugs out just as the box does um, but in place of the box if you want the car to run in its stock condition. So this is the final step when we plug the tuning box into the main cable. Um, should have also said at the start of the video when before you start installation always make sure the ignition's turned off, the keys are out of the vehicle and probably 10 or 15 feet away. Some vehicles have keyless entry and if you have the keys close to the vehicle, the ECU doesn't power down completely. So the car needs to be completely powered down for five to 10 minutes so that when you go and start unplugging things, you're not gonna cause a uh, error on startup of the engine. The final part is finding a safe location for the box on this little abarth. It's really easy because you've got the main wiring harness here, which is nice, cool, dry area here for it to go on. Also with the boxes, we put little openings on the top and bottom. This is for zip ties to go through. We prefer that you don't put anything sticky on the back here because some of the um, adhesive pads are so strong that when you take them off, it peels off the serial number label and then it's impossible for us to check if your warranty's still valid. So put that round the back of the wiring loom through the top slot in the box. And just pull it in tight. And the same with it. On this side and through the slot. And pull it tight. And that's not going to go anywhere. And that's your installation complete.